there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, we back, we back, we back back, that's it, no more travelling, no more going about, no more missed days, no more nothing, we are back back, full time, daily uploads, some double uploads, <clears throat> just like today, so, hope you guys are all well, and hope you're, um, buzzing at the fact that we are back now full-time properly back to the routine back to the dailies back to the normal stuff um and yeah that's gonna be how it is from today but it's not all normal um away from this channel is it um no i'm sure many for many of you life is normal for me yeah life is normal um but chelsea football club <laughs> <laughs> we don't do normal. We don't do normal. If if Chelsea Football Club were normal, the club would have to be shut down. Simple. Close it up. Lock the doors, throw the key in the river. Because we don't do normal. And boy, oh boy, are we not doing normal. Um, I'm back now, um, so I can focus on this properly because <laughs> it's actually quite crazy. I was in trying to enjoy the last couple of days of my time away, right? I'm really taking it all in. But I swear, I constantly had to... Wait, hang on, hang on, one sec, one sec. Oh, bloody hell, Bowley's done this, or oh, Clear Lake have done that, or oh, what's going on here? Oh, it's kicking off again. Oh, someone said this, someone said that. Oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. Like, literally, the amount of times I've done that, well, now we get to get into the meat and potatoes. Yeah, now we get to go into the eye of the storm. And it's starting today. I'm going to give you a double upload today. <laughs> today, this video, this first video, I'm going to sum up what's happened over the last two days, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on the situation right? My opinion on the whole situation. Later on today, we'll see what the latest is, and then we'll dive into the news as we normally do. In four days' time, we've got to play Bournemouth away at the Vitality, if I'm not mistaken. That is what's happening, I think. Um, <laughs> I need to check the schedule. But we got a game, so that will be um, something to preview in three days from now. So make sure you guys are here for that. But let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let me show you what's gone down. In no particular order, I've got uh, seven pieces of news here, right, from the last 48 hours that we can just read, tuck into, and just speak our minds, right? So, without further ado, let's get into what we saw. Apologies. They're already giving me indigestion, yeah? It's not the lunch I just had, it's Chelsea giving me indigestion. Um, here's what we saw yesterday. Uh, no, last night, very late last night. This made me laugh. Check this out. So sources at Chelsea say Paul Wynn Stanley and Lawrence Stewart delivered an 18-page report detailing why Maurizio Pochettino needed to be replaced, which clearly Capital supported. However, Todd Bowley attempted to veto. <laughs> Let me quote Ross and Rachel from this. If you know friends, you know friends. Front and back, yeah? 18 pages front and back, I'm sure, right? 18, are you guys serious? Are these guys actually serious? This is what they're doing. Is this, this is what you call work. This is the work you're doing. You, 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 you delivered an 18 page report why Pochettino needed to be replaced. I hope this is made up. I hope this is, but you know what? It probably isn't. <laughs> it probably isn't. Now, why, why am I saying this? Do you really need to write 18 pages to put a case forward as to why you think a manager should be dismissed? Is that really a thing? Does that really need to happen? And what a waste of time. What a waste of time and resources. Like, that's just shambolic. And why is it shambolic on top of that, might I add? Because these two clowns that apparently wrote this 18-page report are the same ones that admittedly at the beginning before they hired Pochettino put out on the Chelsea website publicly that they went through a long and extensive process to hire Maurizio Pochettino and made sure that he was the right man for the job. What are we doing? So... So you what? You, you wrote 18 pages to say, we don't know what we're doing. That, that doesn't have to take 18 pages, my friends. That doesn't have to take 18 pages. I can do that with two lines. 
<laughs> two lines. I can get that done in five minutes, right? And, uh, what is what a waste? Everything. This is this is this is why I'm this is why I'm peed off, right? Everything is a waste. Right now at Chelsea, everything is so wasteful. Everything is throw out the window. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, that's the first piece of news that I saw, um, that I thought I'd mention, and um, it made me laugh. <laughs> 18 pages. What a bunch of clowns. Um, right, here's Rahman Osman. Check this one out. The fallout between Bowley and Egbali has been crystal clear to anyone close to the club, including match-going fans, but a resolution seems unlikely anytime soon. Neither of them wants to sell, and here's why. I, I thought I'd mention this because I just want to re-emphasize on the point of the fact that this was obvious. Like I said a few videos ago when I was away, something was wrong. We didn't know what, but something was wrong. Come on. You can't be playing so... Not just weird... Your results are so up and down, right? Up and down, up and down, mainly down. But a few ups, right? And it's so unstable and it's so, up, it's so bumpy. You don't get that when you've got a stable environment behind the scenes. I've said this before. If I'm not mistaken, when Tuchel was here or was it before Tuchel? I've said this before. I don't remember when. But when results are going pear-shaped, things are wrong in the club on some sort of level. It can be the manager, it can be the players, it can be the board, it can be upstairs, it can be whatever. Something's happening. It's like when things started going left under Mourinho. Let's take that example. Well, why? Well, because it was kicking off between the two doctors and him, right? Boom. Team is now unstable. Boom. Things are kicking off. Results all of a sudden are going down the toilet. It happens every single time, no matter what the situation. But if there is a situation, the team is impacted, which is why I laugh. Now, when some people say, oh, you don't need to worry about this, right? Let's just focus on the team and focus on getting results. They ain't going to get results. They are not going to get results. How many more times do people need to see examples of results going down the pan whilst things within the club are happening? On any level, like I said, players are unstable or manager is unstable or the board's unstable or whatever it is. There is some sort of instability there. When things are in a harmony, yeah, of course the team will go out and get, get results. Because they're happy, they're motivated, they're calm. They're going into work every day with a smile on their face. They don't need to face any sort of music. It's normal. When you have things happening in your workplace, you're impacted. Whether you like it or not, you're impacted. And no matter how much you try and hide, it's in the back of your head. So this is why it's important. And this is why I said a couple of videos ago, listen, now whatever happens on the pitch, whilst this is going on, it is what it is. I feel bad for the players and for, and for Enzo Maresca. I do. Because none of this is their fault. They have no play in this whatsoever. But they're the ones that are impacted. They're the ones that have to go to Cobham every day. They're the ones that have to hear, oh, what's the latest? What's going on? Oh, what's, that? what's he said now? What has he replied? Oh, what's happening with that one? What? You don't think they talk? You don't think they... They're in, they're in the environment where all of this has been kicking off. Of course they're going to be impacted. So I feel for them. And they are going to have quite a few bumpy results, I think. Right? But you won't be hearing critical uh, craziness from me in relation to them. Not now, anyway. Because if things, were, if things were stable and we're not getting results, then of course now we can look to the players, the manager, what's going on on that level. But this has gone far beyond them. They've got no play in this. But they're going to get impacted. And they have been impacted. So, let's see what happens. Here is more in relation to Clear Lake. Clear Lake Capital are backed by a £19 billion fund they control, as well as personal billions of Egg Barley and Feliciano. You, you know what's funny? I want to mention this, right? It's actually quite hilarious. Now you're beginning to see which journalists side with who, Right? Um, oh, it's, it's mad When you take a step back, right And you just witness this, yeah you just, you, You're doing this and you're just You're watching You get to see which journalist Is propping for who Right Before it was, ah, oh, the PR For all of them And now, now that the owners are separated Well, now you get to see which journalist is in which group And in which clan Right 
And we get to just sit back and go, yep, yep, you're all tapped up. <laughs> you're all tapped up. All of you, all of you are trying to put forward a, 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 a picture or paint a picture for the one that you are representing. It's hilarious. And it's sad because that's not how journalism should be done. That's not. But this situation has exposed a lot of journalists as to which camp they sit in, right? So can I just say, yeah, Clear Lake have a 90 billion pound fund, fund, fund. They run an investment firm that has a fund, right? That they look after on behalf of, the, of their investors that are with them. That's the fund. It doesn't mean Chelsea Football Club have access to it. They can do if Clear Lake choose to put that money that belongs to other investors into the club, but you bet they're not going to do it right now whilst things are completely upside down. You best believe that. So this is irrelevant. <laughs> irrelevant. And we'll get to all this um, in a little bit, actually. Here's the Athletic. Rumblings of discontent have been audible behind the scenes at Chelsea for some time, but specific accusations of a breakdown in relations between Todd Bowley and Clearly co-founder Benedek Bali were always denied. Until now. There we are. Goes to show. Don't put... Don't put your heads in the sand. Don't put your heads in the sand. There was, there was always something wrong and we didn't know what, and now... Oh boy, oh boy, do we know what's going on now. Truth always rises. Always. Always. Here's the Guardian. So this came out first. Clear Lake's view is that Bowley should sell up or accept changes to the club's governance that would remove him from the board and strip him of any say over decisions in exchange for economic concessions. Right? One of Clear Lake's main aims is for minority shareholders to have no say over governance. The prospect of Bowley agreeing to dissolve his power is understood to be non-existent. So, The Guardian, specifically Jacob Steinberg, it seems, I think he's got a contact with Clear Lake. <laughs> right? So that's one. Um, but, I, I want to make a point. Um... Actually, let me hold on that. Hold that thought. I'll, I'll come back to that in a bit. I'll come back to that in a bit. Because the last point I'm going to show you is basically going to sum everything up. Um, but here is The Athletic in regards to the stadium, front of shirt sponsor, etc. Uh, the lack of progress on the stadium project is cited as a factor in the relationship breakdown between owners. The club also do not have a front of shirt sponsor this season, further increasing the needs to up prices. Great. Um, th these were these were signs that something was wrong, right? People were like, I don't know, we're going to get a sponsor, it's going to be fine. Yeah, where? Where, where? where? Second season running. And you know what? It's worse this time around. Season has, season's begun, it started, and we're not even close to getting a front of shirt sponsor. This time last year, we were hearing about Infinite Athlete, at least. And then they eventually showed up and we got them on the front of our shirts. Now, we don't know who's... We might not get one. Especially now, what? You think now negotiations are ongoing? Yeah, who's, gonna, who's running these negotiations? Is it Clear Lake or is it Bowley? You tell me which one. Mate, wh this is insane. On top of that, yeah, the stadium, that's not happening. That is not happening. As long as this is still going on, that is not going anywhere. That is in dead mode, right? It's like a car that doesn't want to start up. It's, not, it's, it's a non-starter, right? Just leave it. Put the key in the room and just leave it. Leave it. Because not only is it impacted by the fact that the CPO exists and all of that, we can't move away, but they're, they're fighting each other. They don't even know what they want between themselves. We got no chance for a new stadium, so park that, shelve it. But it goes to show all of these little things were going on and we didn't really bat an eye that, yeah, maybe the owners are kicking off between themselves. Well, here's the Athletic on one more point. Clear Lake and Bowley are in tatters. Bowley's approach is to hire experts and let them get on with it. While Clear Lake, particularly Iqbali, has taken a role considered by Bowley as micromanaging. A source close to Bowley's side described Iqbali as being obsessed with player trading. The Chelsea ownership crisis, why Clear Lake and Bowley's marriage is at breaking point. 
I, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like no one saw this coming, isn't it? Um, when we got a consortium, this is what we were all scared of, right? Like too many cooks in the kitchen, it's going to implode at some point. And we were hoping it won't, but here we are now, three years down the line, nearly three years, and it has. It's not just imploded, it's imploded and exploded at the same time. Here's the thing. That last point, by the way, probably shows that The Athletic have a source linked to Todd Bowley, um, just to make that point. But um, the relationship is completely dead between them, right? I want to make this point because now they're starting to make it look like, okay, Clear Lake want to buy Bowley out. Bowley wants to buy Clear Lake out. It's got to be one or the other and that's it. And like it's been mentioned by The Athletic, I agree with Todd Bowley's approach here, by the way. You get the football people, one sporting director, not two, and you let them get on with it and you take a step back. I agree. If that's, if that's Todd Bowley's approach, I completely agree. Now, some people are going to look and go, oh, no, but Todd Bowley's first transfer window was a shambles. Yeah, it was. And that was a huge mistake because we should have gone and got a sporting director first before we got any player. But Todd Bowley wanted to go and play sporting director. And he did. And he fumbled, right? And we threw a lot of money out of the window without getting top, top quality. But we got a little bit of quality in little bit then Iqbali and Clear Lake took over and boom all of a sudden we're shopping for data and we're shopping for kids right a complete 180 now it's being made to look like one has to buy the other out I'm not gonna sit here and just go okay we gotta choose between team Bowley and team Clear Lake yeah it's gotta be one of those teams that have people lost the ability to use common sense this is what I'm because I'm on the timeline and I'm reading I'm like are people not thinking here? What's going on? People have lost the capacity to think. Have people not, not just maybe, maybe looked at the possibility of the fact that both of these guys can actually sell? No? No one's entertaining that because everyone's got it in the back of their heads that they've got to hold on to the club for 10 years. I call BS on that. I call BS on that point. Now we've seen all of this. What sense does it, does it show? Okay, let me get this straight. So Clear Lake can buy out Todd Bowley. Todd Bowley can leave. Todd Bowley can sell. Todd Bowley can buy out Clear Lake and then Clear Lake can sell and leave, right? So Clear Lake will leave and they can sell. But both of them can't sell. One extra point to add. Todd Bowley can't pay up to buy Clear Lake side himself. He needs to go and get investors. Am I right? We all know that one. He needs to go and get others to come and join him and form a new group with him. That way they can buy out Clear Lake's part, which has been shown to be, yeah, possible. It's a possibility. He can do that if he wants. So let me get this straight. Bowley can sell his part if he wants. Clear Lake can sell his part, th their part if they want. Bowley can go and get external investors to come and become new part owners of the club, but both of them can't sell the club for the next 10 years. This is complete rubbish. Complete. We've all been fed a lie. I am willing to put something down on here and go, we've been fed a lie. They can sell. And this is why I'm saying, because I believe if we're able to get a brand new owner, I would rather take option three, thank you very much, and go and get one brand new owner. One brand new one. Buy out both of them. There is no possible way that these billionaires have locked themselves in for 10 years, right, without the possibility of leaving. Come on, do me a favor. They're billionaires for a reason. When it comes to money and being able to, you know, run businesses, yeah, they are successful people. You think they're going to tie themselves into one asset for 10 years with the possibility of it crashing? Like we can see it now, this is going to crash and burn. Let's have it right. This is going to crash and burn. This is not getting sorted tomorrow. And people are looking and going, oh no, but only Clear Lake are fine with this. They need, to... it's Todd Bowley that's in trouble. I beg to differ. I'd like to say it's the other way around. Bowley has a small percentage in this and he put his own money on the table here alongside uh, what Mark Walters, Hans Wargwiss, etc. right, to form their little group. But Clear Lake are the ones that have Chelsea Football Club on their portfolio as an investment, right? 
They're the ones that have to maintain their reputation as 62% owners of Chelsea Football Club to the other investors that are tied with Clear Lake Capital and having their funds managed by Clear Lake in order to get them a return on their money as well. The longer this goes on, the longer Clear Lake look bad. And the longer everyone else that's tied with Clear Lake begins to panic and go, oh my God, maybe my money's not safe with Clear Lake. Maybe I need to look elsewhere. Maybe I need a new investment firm. Maybe You don't think they're doing that? This is all a money game. So to believe that Clear Lake are completely safe here, the longer this goes on, the more it's going to damage them. But on top of that, I don't trust either. Simple as that. I don't trust either. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend and choose Team Bowley, Team Clear Lake. If we have to absolutely choose, which I don't believe we do, I'd like to say I reckon Bowley's pitch is probably better than Clear Lake's because Clear Lake are just bloodsuckers. Complete bloodsuckers here, right? Bowley, I think, is just very naive when it comes to football. And just, as Chelsea Football Club, we can't afford that. But... I do believe that they're not tied in for 10 years. I believe that they were tied in for a decade up until when they were able to spend the minimum required amount that they had to spend when they bought the club, which was what? Was it 1.2 or 1.5 billion? Well, guess what? Knock, knock, ring, ring. We've done it. We've spent that much money now. So you best believe they're able to get their return on their money and they're able to sell if they want to. That's how I think it's going down. If we hadn't spent the billion like we did, and that's the reason why I think we've done it so quickly, is because it was a requirement. That was a requirement when they bought the club. They had to invest just over a billion pounds. We all remember that. Into the, well, they've done it. They've done it. We've spent that money. Now, I think that unlocks the possibility of them selling Chelsea Football Club if they want. What we're seeing now is brief versus brief. PR machine versus PR machine. Bowley's PR versus Clear Lake's PR. Clear Lake's PR versus Bowley's PR. You're going to see articles fighting each other over the next few months. Not weeks, months. This is why I said the, like, the other day, I think this season is a write-off. This is a, you can't operate in this environment. Which again, which is why I feel sorry for the players and for Maresca. Because on a footballing level, we can critique. But when this is happening, football's out of the window. It's out of the window. They ain't going to perform. They might get the odd result here and there. Don't get me wrong. We will win games. But we will lose games. But how can you not? When this is going on, it's a foregone conclusion. So, I want to put it out there, two things. Get ready to see the PR fighting each other, yeah? It was one big PR machine trying to feed us. Well, now we get to sit back and watch them feed each other, right? That's one. And two, I believe now with the investment that's already been made, the money that's been spent, they can both sell. And they're both trying to pitch and make it look like they are, well, they're not they make it look like, I think they're both doing their best to get the other party to sell first. They don't want to be the one to execute it. But I do believe they can both sell. And we can get a brand new owner if we really wanted to. So let's wait and see what happens. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. And that's my entire summary overall. What I do want to say, video number two later on, will be an update. Back to the normal updates, back to the normal news, back to the normal opinions. We see what happens from now up until later. I'll give you my thoughts on that. And we get ready for the weekend where we play Bournemouth. So thank you very much. I'll see all of you later. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Notification bell on. Um, there will be a few collabs. I am with Johnny later on, Minerals, so on his channel. I am going to be on All You Can Eat Chelsea very soon, whether it's this week or it's next week. One of them, that's going to be um, pieced together. I am going to be with Nini as well at some point. We are talking. We're looking to get something in again. Um, bring it on. So I'll see all of you later on. Have a good one, people. Look after yourself. See you tonight. Take care and peace.